Hey guys, it's John. I'm making this video to let you know about a lot of things that you may not know about. I'm titling it Crossroads, which is a very dramatic title, I know, but uh, it's so you'll click on it because you wouldn't click on a video that says like big update or whatever. I know because I've titled a video that before and it kind of bombed. So here we are Crossroads. I actually, it's it's not a completely like clickbait title. It's uh, kind of a theme for this video. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna be talking about a number of things in this video. I'll try to go through them very quickly. The first is I'm gonna be catching you up on some personal things that have been going on and that will be going on that you may not know about because either you don't follow me at all on social media or maybe you do, but you don't follow me that closely. Won't take too long. Uh, I'm also gonna be talking about some things that I have been doing that I think I'm doing a, probably a poor job of promoting. So you may not know about that stuff that's going on because I do a lot more than what's just on this YouTube channel. So I'll be plugging that stuff. And finally, I'll also talk about everyone's favorite topic, content. Very hot topic in the comments of my videos as of late. Lots of dramatic people being like, What's going on with this channel? What's going on? That's not the channel I fell in love with. Their words, not mine. Uh, so I'll be talking about kind of my thought process behind a lot of the videos that I've uploaded so far this year and what I plan on uploading in the future and what my vision for 2023 is for this year. So buckle up and I uh, watch all of it. Don't just, don't just skip around, okay? All right, let's start with personal life stuff. So if you didn't know, and, and there's, there are people out there that don't know this, I know because I still get surprised reactions to it, but I am married. My wife, Kimmy and I got married in October, 2020. I posted one picture on social media and for some reason I thought, that would be good enough. So yeah, we've been married for two and a half years uh, and it's been great so far. Thanks for asking. Another piece of big news is that we are nine months pregnant with a baby, just to clarify. Nine months, 36 weeks. So pretty far along, baby is gonna be here any minute. So if the channel goes dark for a little bit, suddenly in the next couple weeks, you might wanna check my social media if you wanna be sure, but probably am dealing with a lot, probably gonna go off and do that for for a couple of weeks i've i've blocked it off in my mind of like when the baby gets here i'm gonna be baby 24 7 for at least a few weeks and i probably am not going to upload a tearful vlog with sad markiplier piano music in the background being like oh the baby's here so don't expect that this is probably the only news you're gonna get outside of like an instagram photo or something so yeah, if you didn't know that we're pregnant, like I said, it's gonna happen any minute now. So kind of a funny time to, for you to find out when it's almost here. So yeah, I can't wait to meet them, whoever they are. We don't quite have the nursery put together yet, but I did construct a pretty cool bassinet, if I do say so myself. So if the baby pops out tomorrow, uh, they'll have a place to lay their cute little head. Um, I'm sure they're cute. How could they not be? So yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I have to say about that. In other news, Kimmy and I took a two week vacation in May to Colorado. We saw a lot of amazing natural sights. Uh, went to the Black Canyon in Gunnison Park, went to Crested Butte, went to Rocky Mountain National Park, which was amazing. We went to the Stanley Hotel, which was awful. So overall it was a great trip. I had fun uh, touching grass and not regretting it and uh, enjoying the sights and sounds and smells of Colorado. So yeah, we had a great uh, vacation. We came back feeling refreshed and then immediately caught COVID, both of us. So it was like a week and a half of us being out of commission. And uh, even now I have kind of a lingering COVID cough, which is no fun. We're both alive, we're both here, and um, we're annoyed, but <laughs> we're well. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all I've got for personal life stuff. Uh, I think baby is a big one. So I don't know why I'm coming forth like, Sorry, that's all I had. I mean, that's a pretty big life update. Had a lot of life updates in the past three years um, between all the family members dying and everything. So it's it's gonna be great to be able to greet a new one into the fold for the first time. Uh, you know, not that 
Not that they're replacing the ones that have gone, but uh, it'll just be nice to see a new face at uh, family gatherings. So, uh, yeah, we're very excited. And uh, thank you ahead of time for all the congratulations. When it comes to content that I'm doing, stuff I'm doing like business wise, I do a pretty poor job of promoting that stuff. So I'll just go through like a laundry list of stuff. I'm not going to sit here and talk your ear off about them. But it's just like, uh, just in case you didn't know that I'm doing this, I'm doing this. If you didn't know, uh, I run uh, the number one, actually, number one asymmetrical horror podcast. It's called Spine Chill. We're 31 episodes in. It's a weekly podcast, or at least it's supposed to be. Lately, it's been a little uh, more like bi-weekly, but that's mostly my fault. We talk... A lot about asymmetrical horror games, mostly Dead by Daylight, but we've been talking a lot about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This last episode, we talked about like uh, VHS, Video Horror Society, that's finally shutting down. We talked about um, Home Sweet Home Online, which is kind of in a weird limbo. Most asymmetrical horror games are, uh, there's not much to talk about, so mostly we talk about Dead by Daylight because it has the most going on, but we, we check in with a lot of the others. We talk about Evil Dead, Ghostbusters, Spirit Unleashed. So if you're interested in asymmetrical horror, I would recommend checking it out on Spotify, and there'll be a link to that in the description. I also post video versions on my DVD channel, so there'll be a link to that in the description too. Now, I also actually have another podcast that I've been doing. It's an influencer podcast where I talk about streaming, content creators, uh, and just kind of give my commentary and, and weigh in on things. And that's called Influenza, which I like saying. The thing is, this is kind of in limbo right now because I'm figuring out what to do with it. So I recorded like three audio only pilot episodes just to see if like the interest was there. I'm thinking of ways to kind of make it more of an official thing. So I'm thinking I might do a video version alongside the audio version. So you can listen to that on Spotify as well uh, for updates. So if I end up making a video version of the Influenza podcast, uh, it'll probably be a separate channel almost assuredly. And so I'm probably not gonna post a video about that. So I'll probably talk about it on the audio version. So you can find that on Spotify or um, on Apple Podcasts, it's on both of those. I talk about Mr. Beast. Great. That'll get him. I'm developing a video game at the moment, which I've said on video before, but I'll say it again. If you're wondering how it's going, it is going fine. Very, very early in things. Not quite ready to reveal any details about the game, but I will just say out of a planned five chapters, I am almost done writing chapter two. Getting about to the halfway point in terms of writing, but as far as things that have actually been made yet, there's not really anything to show or talk about. There's a lot of writing involved in the game, and once again, I have to emphasize it's not a horror game. Don't expect a horror game, not a horror game, different genre. Lots of writing involved. The um, document is about 400 pages. So, that should give kind of a clue about what type of game it is. Conceptually, it's really strong. It's just nothing's been made from it yet, but I have I have plans for that. So it is something that I plan on seeing through to the end. Um, I don't expect it to be a, a big smash hit, and I don't even expect most of you guys to play it because um, I'm not sure if it's going to be in your wheelhouse of, of game to play. But um, yeah, when it does, you, you can bet that I'll I'll make a video announcing it. Kimmy and I are working on a new series for my second channel, John Twolf, which has been inactive for a few years. We have been recording Zero Time Dilemma, which is the third game in the Zero Escape series. Um, the thing that's kind of, it, people, a lot of people have been waiting for this, like, for, for years, because we played the first two games on that channel and then we just stopped. I'm not going to post the videos until the whole series has been recorded though because I don't want to get stuck. You know, we've posted like 10 videos and then there's just nothing for two months because that can happen with that channel. Another thing is that uh, we're, we're kind of in limbo right now because like we took our two week vacation then we had COVID for a week and a half and we got the baby coming up. And so I'm like, oh, we really gotta, we really gotta cram the rest of our recording sessions in before the baby gets here. So we're currently in that kind of situation where we're like, we need to go on like a recording marathon 
because once baby gets here, that's it's over, right? Like we're not gonna have time for that. <laughs> so we're, we are working on it and we're trying to get it done. Just wanna let you know that it was happening. Last thing I'm gonna talk about is I actually have a Discord server. I've had a Discord server for seven, eight years, maybe longer. It's a long storied history. At first it was a Patreon exclusive Discord server, but I don't have a Patreon anymore. But ever ever since I shut down my Patreon, it's been uh, Twitch subscriber only. Now for the past six months or so, it's actually been open. It's a public server, but I've only been posting the link to the server in stream chat. So I figured why not post it here too? There's an invite link in the description if you want to join the Discord server. Uh, we do have mods, so you do have to behave yourself. You will get banned if you're a total jerk. So I'm just letting you know that uh, ahead of time. You can go to the rules channel for rules. Okay, I'm reading them right now. No anime, no K-pop, no Fortnite, and no hentai. And uh, the Madagascar penguins are there to enforce those rules. They've been in effect since 2019. They're very strict. Uh, don't let the fact that there's an anime text channel fool you, by the way. Um, it's not for for common use, okay? If you post, it's a trap. If you post there, you'll be banned. <laughs> but yeah, feel free to join it. Uh, there's lots of different text channels, and, and if you have any suggestions for new text channels, that'll be great. Just treat other people with respect, and have a nice time. Okay, thanks. And yeah, that's it. I think that's everything that I wanted to plug and promote. So now we're going to get into the last section of the video, which is content. So it's no mystery that the content on this channel has been perplexing to some. Very, very confusing because started off this year posting pretty normal stuff like uh, Choo Choo Charles, Bending the Dark Revival you know, things like that. And then all of a sudden I started uploading stuff like uh, my Dead Space review or ghost debunking videos or AITA videos or, you know, most recently I uh, posted an 11 hour uh, music collection video or I posted um, my horror games I didn't play video, which just went up. So if you've been one of the many people that's been scratching your head, what the heck is going on here? I'd be, I'd be happy to talk a little bit about what my plans are for this year. Now, before I get into it, I just want to say I've had a great time posting videos so far this year. I've had a lot more fun than I have in the last couple years. Um, just posting basically the same type of video over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. I really want to challenge myself as a content creator and I want to grow in my video making and my editing and my uh, scripting and everything else that I do in preparation for some of these videos. And I find that uh, doing different formats is really helping with that. You know, the best way to grow is by doing different things. And if you do the same thing over and over again, you won't grow you'll just stagnate. I've felt like I've been stagnating for a while now. Uh, should not be a surprise. I've actually talked about this like ad nauseum, I feel like in previous update videos, like here. I really wanted to see like, do I still enjoy making gaming videos? Do I still enjoy making long series? You know, I'm planning on coming back to this channel with a bit of different content. I'm planning on uploading a bit of non-gaming on this channel more regularly. And here... I want to try my hand at non-gaming video content for a few years now. And here... I am tired of playing these multi-hour indie horror games. So I'm gonna stop doing that. I'm gonna stop being a predominantly horror channel. Maybe, I, maybe I've been kind of skirting around the issue, beating around the bush, not really getting in there and saying exactly what I mean, but... Um, basically, I just, after posting 12 years of Let's Play videos, I officially cannot do it anymore. Now, I, I do still have interest in posting Let's Play videos, but what I mean I can't do it anymore is I can't just do that anymore. I have to do different things too. 
And so uh, a lot of the stuff I've been choosing to do this year has been me spreading my wings a little bit and uh, trying different things. Even if they're not all that different, they're different enough to where it's been very helpful for me just as a person. So, you know, I'm not going to get into, I'm not going to beat the dead horse about like why I don't want to exclusively post Let's Play videos, but I'll just give you kind of a Cliff Notes version. Um, basically, I feel like I've kind of done everything I can do with that format. I... I'm not gonna go like super crazy with the editing and and be like one of those channels that are aimed at 10 year olds where I'm just like bouncing all over the screen. There's like air horns in the background, you know, I'm not gonna be doing anything like that. So I feel like I've kind of pushed the my style of those videos as far as I can push it and I'm kind of bored with it. I'm not so much bored with the games. I still have fun playing the games like for my Resident Evil 4 remake playthrough, I had a blast playing that game. I had a blast playing Amnesia the Bunker. But when it comes to making videos out of these games, I'm not that excited about the video making part of it. Now, those of you that don't know, like I do have an editor, Max, but we, we've been splitting the videos like 50-50. A lot of the videos he edits, but a lot of them I also edit. Like I did the entire Resident Evil 4 series. He's done all of the AITA and ghost debunking videos. So we kind of split things up. I think just in terms of making the videos. I don't so much mean the editing, I just mean like putting the video out, reading the feedback for it. I just have gr have grown kind of bored doing that. It's not I feel like there's not as much excitement anymore. And I feel like this is a key point for me to drive home. The main reason I make videos is to read people's feedback. I want to know what do you think of the video? I want to know what parts you thought were funny. I want to know what parts uh, like resonated with you, what you thought was interesting about it, right? And uh, that's the main reason. Um, it's not really, you know, I want the view counts to be high, obviously. I want to make money from the videos, obviously. But like, for example, I don't run mid-roll ads on any of my videos, so money's not that important to me. Views aren't that important to me because if they were, I would literally do nothing but upload random horror games videos because those bang every time, like 250k plus instantly every single time without exception and sometimes way more than that. So uh, the reason why I continue to make videos is because I really enjoy the back and forth and the, and the feedback. Even if I don't get in there and respond all the time, that's the main reason I do it. So with that in mind, I've been very happy with most of the feedback uh, to the new formats that I've been doing. The ghost debunking videos, I've I've uploaded those because, you know, it's, it's horror related, but it's not gaming related. And I have other interests besides games. And uh, so I'll, that that's part of me expressing that is, is the ghost debunking videos. So I've been watching those. I've been having a great time debunking. I, I, I use that word because it's a nice brandable word but they're really just comedy videos to me. I, they're entertainment. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sitting there writing a video essay about like, here's why ghosts aren't real. I'm making those videos because I think it's entertaining and fun. Some of them are so obviously fake. Those are my favorite ones, but um, yeah, the, the feedback to those have been really good. It's been a very positive experience posting those, even though uh, I've been mostly streaming them and then we, uh, we've been cutting them up for YouTube. So I'll stream for like, you know, three hours, watch them for three hours, and then we'll take like the favorite 45 minutes and put them on YouTube. Now some people don't like that they're taken from streams, but I also post plenty of videos, like way more uh, videos are posted exclusively to YouTube than are taken from streams, so so I don't really see it as, a, as an issue. And then I've also been posting something even more experimental, which are the AITA videos. Now, those are a big risk because they're not only not gaming related, but they're not horror related. Well, sort of. Um, <laughs> they're sort of horror related. Uh, I've only posted three of those. I think my favorite was the first one. That probably got the best feedback. I streamed it just off the cuff, being like, I want to do like a React stream. I want to toy around with like React content. I think that'd be fun. But a fun challenge for me to react to something that's not gameplay, right? And I actually got some like really good feedback. Chat was going crazy doing that stream. I even had I even had several other creators uh, DM me afterwards, being like, "That was great. That was a great stream." And I was like, "Wow, okay, that never happens." So I must be onto something here, you know. 
And so we uh, we cut up the first stream and we posted on YouTube and it got great feedback there too. I will say I'm probably not going to be posting AITA as much as the ghost debunking videos because while they've been fun to make and I've enjoyed you know, the format and everything. It's... I think I'm gonna have to curate the content a little bit better, which might mean that I don't stream them. I think I might be better off doing some sort of, like, AITA filtered type of experience where you just look at the best threads of, like, the people that are just so obviously the asshole in the situation and they're completely oblivious. Rather than what I have been doing, which is just reading random threads, and sometimes, a lot of times, you run across these threads that are like a little, a little less obvious about who's really the asshole. Sometimes there's more like nuanced co topics and conversations, and I would just rather the the videos be a completely like fun comedic experience rather than me having to like, as I have in the past couple videos, like having to like tackle a little more like controversial issues. It's really funny actually because. The feedback that I get on the AITA videos is widely varied. I've had it go all, like all over the gamut, all the way from like, John's so woke now. He always sides with the women in the threads. Uh, to John's so problematic. He He's siding with the men in this thread and not with the women when they're obviously in the right. So it's like, okay, well, they can't both be true, so. Uh, I'm just gonna ignore you both, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but they've been fun to read. Um, it, it sure beats the hell out of, like, reading someone micromanaging, like, how I uh, tackled the cabin in Resident Evil 4, and my, my resource management wasn't very good. And I, that, that stuff is, like, really tedious to me, so this is not fun in a different way, but it's at least different. <laughs> So yeah, the AITA videos have been fun, a fun challenge, but, and I, and I think I'm gonna keep uploading them because their feedback overall is, is pretty good and people enjoy them, but probably gonna be like a once a month type of thing. If you have recommendations for AI, AITA threads, by the way, you can you can feel free to, to let me know about those. I'll like uh, archive them somewhere for, for when I'm filling up to recording one. Well, let's talk about the music collection video. Uh, I uploaded a 11 hour video of me digging through my 380 album collection and talking about each one, talking about the bands, talking about the CD, talking about like what my mentality was like when I first bought it and stuff like that. That was never meant to be like a banger video or anything. I didn't think it was gonna blow up. I just kind of posted it like, yeah, whatever. And it's 11 hours long, but you're not really supposed to watch the whole thing. I put timestamps for everything so you can just like swing around and and check out whatever you wanted, right? And it was just kind of like uh, me stretching my legs type of thing. And also showing that I have interests outside of video games and outside of horror. Music is an interest that most people have, so maybe we could find some common ground there. Now, what, what I wasn't expecting was for it to not only do pretty well, but for music YouTube to find it, which they left some very interesting comments. A lot of people who didn't even watch like the first few minutes of the video where I said like, I'm figuring out what to do with these albums and I'm not giving all of them away. I'm probably gonna keep like a third of them. A lot of them were like, you're giving all these away? You're the reason that physical media is dying and all this, you know, how could you? You know, people dumping like the whole cultural burden on me of like, you need to keep physical media alive. And I'm just like, I just want to make room in my closet, bro. Like, <laughs> got a baby on the way. But anyway, um, and then I had lots of people being like, 380 albums isn't large, dude. <laughs> I've got thousands. And I was like, why don't you go out, just ask a random person on the street how many albums they own, like physical albums. I think you'll find 380 is quite large, thank you. I never said it was large in the video anyway, uh, but I got a lot of comments like that about just like, he thinks 380 is large. That's nothing, nothing! I spit at that number, Pah! And I was just like, okay, well, glad you got that out of your system, bud. So yeah, the, the feedback to that one was really fun. But uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be posting more like music videos. That was kind of a one-off. And then I had a couple like video essay videos, which have been 
probably the had the most mixed reception. So the first one that I uploaded was the Dead Space review. And yeah, that was a mistake, I think. It was when the Dead Space remake came out, I posted a 20 minute review video, of which about 12 minutes is actually the review, and then eight minutes is like laughing at Steam threads. But I posted it because I thought it would be a great way to experiment. Because the, the way that I was thinking about it <clears throat> was, uh, the video bombed by the way, just for context about my defense here. The reason why I uh, I uploaded the review was because, well, I got flown out by EA to check out the game last fall, you know, not bragging, I'm just setting up context. And so I had already played the first three chapters. I had played the first fourth of Dead Space Remake before it even came out, right? And I knew from playing those chapters that uh, it was a very close, like as close as you get to like a one-to-one -one remake, like straight up remake of the original game, which I had already played several times on stream and on YouTube too. So I've already played Dead Space like several times and playing the remake, I was like, wow, this is like, if I had one criticism of the game, it's like too familiar, like it's too close to the original. And so as the release date for Dead Space Remake came closer and closer, I was like, what am I gonna do about this? Cause it's a kind of a long game and I didn't wanna post like eight videos of Dead Space Remake where I'm like, a necromorph's gonna come out of that vent. Wow, there he is, you know, kind of, cause it's not blind let's play. Uh, it's it's kind of like, I knew what to expect for the most part. And I didn't really know how I was gonna make good content out of that. And I also knew that Dead Space Remake was probably a series that was gonna bomb for most people. And I had just come off playing Callisto Protocol, which is like a worse version of Dead Space. And so, with all these things in mind, I thought, you know, I'll play it off camera and then I'll make a review video and then it'll be a great way to try a new format instead of posting like Let's Play video. And I should have probably communicated this somehow because it took a lot of people by surprise. Probably the number one piece of feedback I got was like, I wish I had known that you weren't going to post a series on this. I think the video is like a well put together video. Like I spent a lot of time editing it and uh, you know, making it, making it like really tight and the pacing and everything. I thought it was a really well put together video, but it bombed. And this is one of those issues with YouTube, you know, the, the success of a video doesn't necessarily correlate with the quality. So I think it's a high quality video that was not very successful. And part of that is my fault um, because one of the rules with pivoting your content from one format to another is that you don't replace, you add. And I replaced. I replaced the expected Let's Play series of Dead Space with a Dead Space review. What I should have done is, it would have been annoying and a lot of extra work, but I should have done a Let's Play for Dead Space and also posted the review. Now, I did this again very recently for a video I just uploaded like a few days ago, but I think it's more justified in that one. I'll explain why in a minute. So yeah, I learned my lesson with that. I was like, fair enough. Doesn't hurt my feelings a little bit that people act like I didn't post a video at all. <laughs> what can you do? Uh, you can't you can't force people to like the stuff that you make. So um, I was just like, okay, I'll keep that in mind for the future, but I'm so glad I did it. And uh, the next one that I uploaded was the ups and downs of mascot horror. Now this video, did really well. And I kind of figured that it would. Of all of all the video essay videos that I've put up this year, that was the one that I was like, yeah, that's gonna do it. It's got a it's got a like a singular focus of like mascot horror as like a subject. And uh, it doesn't just focus on one game or even many games. It focuses on like a genre and like a topic. You know, I talk a lot about Garden of Bonbon, bon, but also Bendy and Poppy and all, you know, Baldy, a lot of the mascot horror games right and it was uh it was really fun to put together and i'm really proud of how it turned out and i think it's a really good video and it's probably the most well received video i've uploaded this year part of the frustrating thing though is that it took so long to put together that style of video that i don't think uh i'm gonna be able to upload more than like two per year type of thing <laughs> frankly like it's um it takes a lot of effort to put into, and the reason why it worked is because I was so, I was like passionate about the topic. And there's not that many, there's frankly, there's just not that many topics in gaming that I'm passionate about. I do have an idea for another one, 
that I'll get around to probably in the next few months. I'm planning on making one of very similar to that about walking simulators because I have a lot to say about that topic and how much I hate that term. And so I'm hoping that that video will do do well and, and, and be well received because I think it'll be, you know, something, it's like a subject I'm, I'm passionate about and I'll be able to make a well-crafted video out of it. So that's, that. I do plan on making more video essays like that, but it's only gonna be if I have a topic. And on another note, I don't want them all to be about horror games. I don't wanna be like the horror game video essay guy. So it's something I'm gonna upload, but it's not gonna become my main thing because that sounds, almost as tedious to me as exclusively posting Let's Plays. I want to be able to do like a wide variety of things. Next, I posted my 2022 horror movies video, uh, which I branded as Wolf Watch, but looking back, that may have been a mistake because it's not quite the same format as like my Netflix Resident Evil video. I kind of think that this video was another learning experience. Um, I think it's a I think it's a high quality video. I'm really proud of how it's edited and paced. There's lots of good jokes and cuts and stuff in it that I put in there. It just didn't it didn't bomb like the Dead Space review, but it didn't do great. So I think part of the reason for that is because I reviewed like 12 different movies for like two minutes each. And I didn't as a result, I didn't really go into detail on any of them, and I kept it spoiler free. So as a result, pretty much the only reaction that you can have to the video is like, huh, that's that's cool. I'll check some of those movies out. And that's it. I mean, you can't really like dive in and like dissect any of my points or anything. Not that I really like want that. I don't really want to read like a seven paragraph little rant about why I'm wrong about Malignant or anything. It just didn't, it didn't encourage a ton of feedback and it kind of lacked that singular focus that the mascot horror video had where it was like about a topic. I, I kind of made it, the reason I made that video was kind of to set the stage for more horror movie content. Cause again, it's non-gaming, but it's horror, just like the ghost debunking videos. Uh, so I figured that was something that I could kind of get into that was like tangential to what I've been making for years. Um, so it was supposed to kind of set the stage for more of that content, kind of get me caught up, so to speak, so I could post uh, reviews about like 2023 horror movies, the latest Scream movie and stuff like that. But that hasn't really turned out to be something that I've had a whole lot of willingness to do. So maybe, you know, maybe, maybe movie content and stuff like that is something that I'll do more in the future or something like that. Uh, but maybe not this year. Maybe it's not quite time. Uh, and then that brings me to the latest video essay review style video that I did, which was horror games I didn't play which I just uploaded. You know, it's kind of hard to see this until afterwards. Cause like, you know, when I'm, when I'm in there and in the editing program and I'm putting it together, I'm, I'm not thinking about this at all. I'm just like thinking about making the best video possible at that point. But I think strategically it's, it's not the best style of video either. Because again, it doesn't have that singular focus that the mascot horror video did. Instead, it's like four mini reviews about uh, four completely separate horror games that don't exactly share a whole lot of common themes. The video didn't bomb. It's doing pretty well, actually, but uh, yeah, the feedback is all over the place. I, I kind of looked at this video as I'm gonna catch up on the big horror games that I didn't play from 2022. And I did that, and I again, it was supposed to like catch me up and lead as like a platform for the future, kind of like the 2022 horror movies video was supposed to do of like, now that I'm caught up, let's get into some new stuff. Yeah, I'm not really feeling like I set the stage properly. So, um, I don't know. These are just the type of growing pains that you get when you're experimenting with different types of videos and different types of formats though. Yeah, I do want to address some pieces of feedback that I got from the video though. Most, mo it was mostly positive. It was mostly positive. Like, I would say a bit more lukewarm than I would have liked. Cause like, the mascot horror video had great response. Um, and this one by comparison, not that I want, not that they, I made them to be similar videos or anything, but they're similarly edited and I mean, they're similar enough. I wouldn't say that it was a video essay though. I would say it was a review, so slightly different. Yeah, I think uh, this one, the, the feedback was positive, but lukewarm, which I find frustrating. And it's nothing, nothing that you did or anything. It's just, you know, I want to upload obviously 
videos that resonate with people enough to where the feedback is really strong, strongly positive. I just didn't do that this time, so. But again, I'm really hard on myself when it comes to things like this. One of the reasons I'm uploading this video is to clearly communicate some things. So I got a lot of questions on that video. Horror games I didn't play. The number one question is, well, why didn't you post playthroughs of these? Why didn't he just post the playthroughs? So I just want to address that real quick. You know, like I've said, I've been trying really hard in my vision for 2023 to upload a wide variety of videos, experiment with a wide variety of formats, and find what else works for me, rather than just posting Let's Plays for the 13th year in a row. And so if I just posted, you know, an eight-part Burnhouse Lane series, an eight-part Signalis series, you know, uh, two long one-shots for Stay Out of the House and Faith the Unholy Trinity. I mean, that's 18 Let's Play videos that I'm going to have to fit in with other videos that I'm trying to, to throw in for variety. And then before you know it, I'm just posting nothing but Let's Plays again. Rather than posting those 18 videos, I decided to post just the one different video. And so if I had posted the playthroughs, it would have gone against my entire vision of the year. So that's reason number one. Reason number two why I didn't post the playthroughs is because there are no playthroughs. <laughs> I recorded myself playing the games with the express intent of using the footage for the review video. So there's no playthroughs to release. I basically played them in my own time. I recorded them and if I had anything to react to, like the Signalis ending, for example, that I included in the video, then I would talk into the microphone. But other than that, I'd be sitting there in silence, in the darkness, with no face cam, playing the game. And so there's nothing to release. There's eight hours of me playing Signalis, but no commentary, no cam, and um, it's not something I'm going to post. I'm not going to post something like that. Because I'm trying, I'm trying to post, you know, different things than that. Uh, I've never posted no commentary Let's Plays, uh, and I don't plan on starting now. But uh, yeah, there's no playthroughs that exist. I'm not sitting on 18 videos that I was just like, I don't think I'll release these after all. And then I twirl my mustache and throw them into the burning pit of forgotten playthroughs. That That's not a scenario that happened. I always, I've been working on this for a couple of months, playing through the games and, and stuff um, in my spare time to make the review video, uh, which was a lot of time investment, and maybe that wasn't the smartest thing for the channel. But I don't regret that I made the video, I liked making the video, I had fun. You know, for the most part, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. I think for the future, when I make videos like that, I'm going to try to make them more focused, uh, like the mascot horror video. And that that's one thing that I've learned through the first six months of the year. Like, what are my lessons? I would say, the winners for me for the first half of 2023 are I want to make more video essays like the mascot horror video. And like I said, I've got an idea for my next one. I don't know when it'll release it, but I'll be working on it. And uh, I want to do more ghost debunking react content. I think that works. You know, it's horror like like you guys like and uh, they've been doing really well. The feedback's been really good and they've been really fun. So and it's something a little different. It's non gaming. I'm really happy to be doing something it's not in gaming because, you know, this is a big thing for me. Like, I, I have a lot of different interests and hobbies. I always have. I think it makes me a well-rounded person to have many different interests and hobbies and things that I'm into. For the past eight years that I've been doing this full time, my I have gradually ignored most of my interests in favor of just horror games uh, and video games in general. And I've seen the effects of that and it's... It's made me less happy. So what I've been trying to do lately is I've been trying to get more in touch with my previous hobbies and interests. And like, for example, my music collection video, that was a one-off, but I, I need to like reconnect with that. I need to see those CDs that I got when I was a teenager, you know, to, to be like, yeah, that's right. I used to be really into this, you know? And one thing that I was struck by when I was making that video was that a lot of my albums that I was like, oh, this is their newest album. And then I'd look at the date and I'd be like, 2015. I kept seeing that over and over. 2015. 2015. And that's the year that I went full time on YouTube. And that's the year that I dropped a lot of my hobbies and interests. 
And so I looked at that and I was like, I haven't really been, like there was a couple times when I was like, I love this band. And I'd be like, the latest album I have is from 2015 and they've had three albums since then. And I haven't listened to any of them. Um, like Soil Work, for example. I was like, ah, oh, the um, the Living Infinite or whatever. Ah, oh, this is their latest album. No, it's not. <laughs> or The Ride Majestic. I think it was The Ride Majestic. Yeah, and they've had like three other albums since then. I haven't listened to them at all. You know, it's that kind of like realization of like, I really need to get back into the stuff. Like, I don't play guitar anymore. Uh, I don't draw. I don't, uh, you know, I used to be really into reading Spider-Man comics and... I have no idea what's going on in his life anymore. Last I heard, he was Dr. Octopus. So I've been trying lately to like rekindle my interest with those. The best way that I can do that and, and feel most fulfilled doing it is to make videos out of them. So I'm hoping in the future, in the next few months, to do more uh, experimental type videos with those type of topics. And so I have a few ideas. I'm just gonna throw them out there. This is, these are things, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be posting horror Let's Plays too. That's always gonna be a part of the channel. That's, you know, a random horror games video here and there. Probably play Silent Hill 2 Remake, etc. Uh, you know, there's a new Killer Frequency game, you know, stuff like that. I'll get to it, right? But I also wanted to start doing things that are, uh, doing making videos that are more properly portraying my uh, well-rounded personality, we'll just say. So, one of the series that I had an idea for is a Goosebumps series. A Goosebumps retrospective. So, I was thinking I could go through the original Goosebumps series as an adult, because I loved those books as a kid, and I've got all 62 over there. Over the past few years, I've been slowly, like, picking up the ones that I didn't have on, on eBay. They were only, like, 15 or so, but... Um, I've been slowly picking up, I've got a full collection now, and I've been thinking about making like a video series about like what it's like to read Goosebumps as an adult. Because <laughs> I don't remember how most of those stories go. So that could be a cool series, I'm going to be hopefully uh, making the first episode soon, TM. You know, and that's another horror tangential series where it's about horror but not gaming, so I feel like it's a good fit. You know, alongside the ghost debunking videos and and the horror game video essays and things like that. Uh, but there's also some non-horror, non-gaming videos that I have in the works. One of the ones I'm really excited about is I have a series coming up on Spider-Man. There's a lot of Spider-Man fans out there, but I feel like a lot of Spider-Man fans haven't really read a whole lot of his comic books. So, you know, like, maybe you play the video games, like, Insomniac's Marvel Spider-Man is amazing. What an amazing game. I've been replaying it recently, actually. It's really good. Maybe you watch the MCU Spider-Man movies, you know, watch the Tobey Maguire movies, the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. Um, you know, you're familiar with, like, the 90s cartoon, maybe, right? But what about the actual comic books? Because there's so many... I, I find it fascinating how many Spider-Man stories there are out there. Because there's hundreds thousands there are thousands of spider-man comic books written by a litany of different writers he has had so many different story arcs so many different characters have played spider-man and i feel like it would be really interesting to go through all of the story arcs from the beginning and see what they're like what's interesting about them is there anything like i'm struck by while i'm reading them and i get to reconnect with one of my favorite characters which is interesting because i'm not really into superheroes uh, spider mans pretty much the only one. I like Batman too. And, and I'd like to go into why the character resonates with me. And I think it'll be something that's really relatable. I think even, I'm hoping, what I'm hoping for the series is, I'm hoping it'll be a series for people that don't know much about Spider-Man, or maybe don't even really care much for him to be able to be brought in like from an outsider perspective. That's kind of how I'm going to be framing it. I have a great name for it too that I'm keeping to myself for now until the first episode comes out, but I've got tons of Word documents about my plans and stuff. Like, if it if it doesn't bomb, I think it'll be a really cool series. So, fingers crossed on that one. I'm also, lastly, I, I'm also really hoping to do a series on the reality TV show Survivor. A lot of people ask me what my favorite TV show of all time is. There's lots of great candidates out there. The Wire, 
is an amazing show, particularly season four, like all time great. Breaking Bad, obviously, right? There's so many good choices. But I think Survivor is probably my favorite TV show of all time. And there's so much content around it because it's been around for 22 years. There are 44 different seasons and I've watched all of them. So I thought it'd be really fun to go through season by season, again, aimed at people who maybe haven't watched Survivor, maybe don't know anything about it. Maybe they watched season one back in the day, but they haven't kept up with it. It's a really fascinating show and it's not just reality show trash either. That's a stereotype I see a lot of like, oh, he's gonna be watching reality shows. I would argue Survivor is less of a reality show, especially now. It, it was a little trashy depending on the season back in the day, but it's not trashy at all now. It's more of a strategic game show than anything else. And I find the social dynamics very interesting. There's also some like jaw dropping things that happen in that show that, uh, are some of the best things I've ever seen on TV. Very entertaining. I'm hoping to do a series on that. I, I'm probably not going to do that one or the Spider-Man one for quite some time. Might not even be this year. Who knows? I might drop the first episode at some point and uh, just have those going on in the background. But I have some one-off ideas. Like I want to do like a Junji Ito uh, manga horror story tier list that I want to upload some more childhood cringe where I uh, react to my old stories. Of course, you guys have been hearing that like a broken record for like three years and you haven't seen anything. You know, this, I think I've proven so far this year that I'm actually willing to, to do different things now. You know, I've, I've been putting my money where my mouth is and, and posting different styles of videos pretty consistently now. So I think I'm finally at a place where I can, I can feel more comfortable doing that. I hope all that made sense. Like I said, I'm still gonna be posting horror let's plays. Okay, don't worry. They're not going anywhere. Um, that was like a weird dollar store Trump impression. Um, why does John have to politicize everything? But yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I had to say. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them politely, please. One of my favorite comments that I got recently was, uh, somebody saying, so you're a gaming channel, but you don't game anymore, huh? And I just want to say, if you're going to give me feedback, please, I would really appreciate it if it was fair. I just would love it if it was like a fair representation of what's actually happening and not just like something completely off the wall like that. Because like, I know I've posted a lot of variety this year, but I've also posted a lot of gaming videos and the vast majority of the videos that I've uploaded so far this year have A, been recorded specifically for YouTube, not from a stream. B, they have been horror Let's Play videos of the usual format, the usual editing. And I think that, you know, that counts for something. When I'm planning the content, I'm also thinking about people who don't want anything to change. Um, I'm hoping to change your mind, but I'm, I'm still cognizant of the fact that you don't want anything to change and you want the same thing that I've been doing. And I am going to continue posting that. And it's been most of what I've been posting. So I would just like to, you know, just to clarify, like when I'm looking for feedback, I just want it to be fair and, you know, taking into account like the facts before you say like, you've been, po you've been posting nothing but ghost debunking lately. Just, just wait. Look at my videos tab, be like, ah, there's plenty of non-ghost debunking videos here, clearly, actually. So that's an unfair statement to make. That's all I ask. Um, hopefully it didn't sound too much like your dad lecturing you just then, but I just can only read so much of that stuff. Thanks for watching this video, sincerely. Um, I know it was really long, but I guess I gotta be better about communicating this stuff um, to avoid confusion. Although I also have to accept that no matter how much I clarify things and no matter how much I get on here and I I feel like I clearly and concisely explain things, there's always gonna be people who didn't watch this video and they won't know about it. So um, if you see somebody in the comments in the future that's like scratched in their head, like what's going on with this channel? Then feel free to point them towards this video. I know that probably someone that's asking that question isn't gonna have an hour to slap down to, you know, far score and seven years ago, here are my plans for 2023. But 
you know, it's at least they know where to find it, right? They can skip around maybe. But I better go before I keep talking forever. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Think critically.